you're really gifted at playing victim. Well, there's no more point to this conversation. You've made the decision clear. The Summer House trailer is here in the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City reunion, part one. Hey everyone, welcome back to Shared News. I'm your host, Morgan. Today we are going to be breaking down the biggest headlines in the Bravo sphere, and there are a lot of them. But before we get into it, if you are new here, please be sure to subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, so you never miss out on any breaking Bravo news. Let's start with the Summer House trailer because I am stuck to my core. I feel like Bravo fans have been waiting for this trailer. We knew it was going to drop because, you know, it usually comes out in February. They usually drop the trailer six weeks before the show. And we were waiting to see the moment that Carl broke up with Lindsay on camera. And we saw it. Dad, he told me he wants to call off the wedding and break up. She's going to spin this and then tell everybody she's blindsided. So we're gonna talk about the biggest moments and obviously that is probably the biggest moment and it's how the trailer starts. The conversation between Carl and Lindsay where Carl allegedly calls off his engagement and wedding to Lindsay on camera. Now, I think some fans might've been surprised, even Carl, by the reaction of Lindsay. For someone who tends to get activated, she really didn't. She gets up, she walks into the room, she calls her dad and says she is blindsided. I feel very blindsided. I'll be the bad guy, that's fine. But she's blind to the things that have gone on the last year. So obviously we know that's gonna be at the end of the season. We know they actually picked up cameras to film that scene after the season had already wrapped. So what happens in the meantime? We might have a potential new love connection with Sierra Miller and newbie Wes. Um, they're seen kissing in the trailer. Wes kind of confesses that he thinks he hits it off with her. And from all the internet sleuthing that I do, I think that they're still together. So I'm happy that we're just not having to talk about Austin anymore when it comes to Sierra. So hopefully this is a good relationship for her. There's also a newbie, his name is Jesse, and he sits down in a scene with Kyle and says, am I supposed to only hit on girls that are single? Red flags all over the field. And then right after that, we get a couple clips of him flirting pretty hardcore with Paige DeSorbo. Uh, we also see a dinner scene where Kyle allegedly confronts him saying, do you wanna talk about how hard you hit on her in the first couple of weeks? It was very awkward. So um, Jesse, not necessarily getting the warmest welcome when it comes to the trailer, if he's gonna come and be a playboy. We check in with Kyle and Amanda who are having a couple of arguments in this trailer. Um, Sierra also says something very surprising to Amanda saying that she doesn't have an identity outside of Kyle. And then we get this scene of them on the beach where Amanda says, you don't like when I have a hard stance on something. And Kyle says, well, I think your stance is BS. You don't like it when I have a stance on something. Your stance is bullshit. So um, there's also some crying that goes on in the trailer between Kyle and Amanda, not together, but there's just different scenes of Kyle crying and Amanda crying. Um, it's hard to tell, you know, at this point what that's about, if it's about drama in their relationship or if it's about the drama in the relationship that surrounds them being Carl and Lindsay. Um, one, I guess, green flag, you can call it, is that the biggest drama of the year last year, which was Danielle, Lindsay and Carl and their relationship, got five seconds in this trailer. So I think that last year's drama is going to be old news. Um, we've seen Lindsay and Danielle together. Of course, Danielle went on Lindsay's um, bachelorette party that she still decided to go on. Uh, Danielle was at the bridal shower. So I think we at least get a friendship reconciliation this season between Lindsay and Danielle. And this is the point in the trailer where all hell breaks loose. It's like every single couple that's on the show is fighting. There are substance abuse accusations in a conversation between Carl and Lindsay. Paige yells seemingly at Craig, you won't compromise on anything. And this is where everyone's crying. It's like Kyle's crying, Amanda's crying, Lindsay is crying. And then at the very end, we see Carl sit down with his mom and his stepdad. I've been a minister all my career and I've married tons of people. I, I wouldn't marry you and Lindsay. So 
definitely some foreshadowing going on there, but Summer House returns to Bravo on February 22nd. Let's move on to some drama in the OC. The Trace Amigas have broken up. Uh, this is fan favorites Vicky Gunvalson, Shannon Storms Bedore, and Tamara Judge. They were besties. Well, they're not besties anymore. This all kicked off on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it when Tamara posted a photo of herself that just said, Uno. And that kind of let fans know Dos and Trace, she's probably not good with at this particular moment in time. Um, that caused a bit of a Twitter war. There's a lot of back and forth, um, but it pretty much told us all we needed to know that these three were not friends anymore. But it seems now that Shannon and Vicky are still friends and it's Tamara that's on the outs. Tamara did speak about this in a podcast episode earlier this week on Two Teas in a Pod. And um, loyalty, I guess, was the word that she used a lot. And it could refer to a couple of different things. So first, it kind of sounded like a business deal gone bad with the Trace Amigas live shows. Uh, they were doing these live shows, but Shannon said she didn't, or not, excuse me, not Shannon, but Tamara said she didn't want to continue doing them after Shannon got her DUI, um, but that she agreed to do one. And then after that, she didn't want to do any more. So while Tamara was away filming for the traders, Vicky and Shannon got a tour manager, got an LLC, and they were thinking of taking the live shows to the next level, traveling every other weekend. And then when Tamara came back, she felt like it was just assumed that she was going to go along with it when she really didn't want to do that. She didn't have time to do all the live shows. So, you know, this could be what Vicky is referencing when she says Tamara has no loyalty. Tamara is kind of contractually obliged to do more with Teddy. Um, they're doing live shows, they're doing podcast tapings, you know, she is under contract with them. So not only that, it could be in response to Tamara being friends with Alexis Bellino, who is now dating John Jansen, who is Shannon's ex. So it's all just very messy. And I'm hearing that Alexis Bellino did get a full time offer to come back to Orange County this year and production starts next week. So who knows what's going to happen on this next season of Orange County. Let's quickly talk about The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, part one of the reunion and the highlights. A lot of it had to do with Monica, but we didn't really get into the reality of Antis of it all or the black eye situation. Obviously, everybody wants to know about that. So they're gonna leave it to part two and part three. Um, but we did get some interesting little tidbits about how Monica became friends with Jen um, and why she became friends with Jen. You know, everybody thought it was kind of strange that Monica would pick up her friends groceries and make sure she makes it on time to her meetings without getting paid. It's like an assistant job without getting paid. Monica said she just wanted to be there for her friend, but Heather whipped out her phone and played an audio of Monica saying she wanted to be like Kim Kardashian and move up the ranks. Can Kim Kardashian was a Yeah. So everybody assumes that Monica was kind of using Jen um, maybe to get acclimated on the show, maybe just to get into the friend circle, but that was really juicy. Uh, the next really interesting part was about Lisa Barlow and her $60,000 ring. We learned that there was some more sentimental value behind the ring. It was a gift from her husband after Lisa struggled giving birth to her son, Henry. Um, obviously, we all know the storyline that Lisa lost it in the bathroom, but what's interesting here is that there was this online theory and I believe it was a blind sent into Dumois that uh, Monica stole the ring in the bathroom. And Monica's upset that Lisa and Heather didn't shut the rumor down. And they were like, we don't really have to defend you publicly. So that's that. Other than the rest of the Monica issues, we're gonna get into some of the other cast. Um, this wasn't like as interesting in my opinion, but nothing is compared to the finale that we watched. But Lisa and Whitney, you know, they talked about the situation after Whitney's um, best friend passed away at the party. We did get to see a little bit more footage of Lisa Barlow asking Whitney, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And Whitney saying no. So I feel like a lot of opinions changed on that situation. And then we get into Meredith, Angie K, and Monica about the rumors and the nastiness. If I want to go for the jugular and talk about this sh the rumors and nastiness about her. Who would you do that? Do you I know what? You want me to go there with her husband? The thing is that Meredith still isn't really taking any accountability for her part in the rumor about Angie K's husband getting out there. In fact, She's more concerned with saying, you know, I didn't say it was a rumor about your marriage. I said it was a rumor about your husband. It's the same thing. Like, can there be a rumor about the husband that doesn't impact the marriage? In my opinion, no. And then of course, uh, Angie Kay says she regrets being so quick to forgive 
with Monica um, after looking back and seeing all the red flags. So part two should definitely be interested. I saw that this part one of the reunion had the highest Salt Lake City rating since the premiere in season one. So it's popping off in Salt Lake City. All right, that does it for our Bravo News recap. Leave us your thoughts, your comments, your opinions in the comment section below. Were you gagged over the Summer House trailer like I was? I've watched it 15 times already. Are you sad that the Trace Amigas are no longer? What did you think of part one of the Salt Lake City reunion? You know, we love to hear from you guys. So leave a comment below. If not, make sure you're subscribed. Ring the bell so you never miss out on any Bravo updates. I'm your host, Morgan, and we'll see you back next time on Share news.